Rumors are swirling of an impending marriage between the Democratic Alliance and the African National Congress. Let's ask Patriotic Alliance's Gaten McKenzie what he has heard. Welcome, Mr. McKenzie. Thank you, thank you very much for having me. There are now rumors are truly swelling. Uh, uh, for some people, this is no longer a rumor, this is fact for us. That everything has been agreed. They are just working out the lobola. You see, in the African culture, in the African culture, before no, the lobola negotiations happen, the two people involved have to agree, yes, we want each other, we want to be married, and now they're coming just to work out the small little detail. And that's what's happening. The DA and the ANC eventually decided that they want to be together. Three meetings were held between them, led by Ellen Zeller. And it's just a matter now of each going back to the constituency to fill the waters. Hence, you see uh, Jordan Hill made a statement. Ellen Winder made a statement. Uh, John Stinnison made a statement. Helen Zeller, the, the statement is basically the same statement that's just filling the waters. The ANC, usually the uh, Federalist League and certain leaders in the ANC. This meeting started with the finance minister uh, and, and, and a guy called George, he's sending me George in the DA, he's on the Federal. Dr. Dion George. Dion George is his name. They started having this type of two nadar between the two of them. And it just went into a full blown. They can deny it all they like. We have people that we are very close to in the African National Congress. And they are just as angry as some people in the DA might be. And I think uh, for the ANC, for the PA, and for Action SA, this will be the biggest gift ever. We are looking forward to the wedding. They, I call it the Las Vegas wedding. <laughs> the Las Vegas wedding. I'm looking forward it, to it. Do you think it will be in the Elvis Chapel? It must be in the Elvis Chapel, because those ones usually never last long. <laughs> Talking about Lebola, who do you think is going to pay, and how much? I think, you know, the, the, the ANC... Uh, the, the DA, you know, the, this is the uncomfortable truth that we must admit. The ANC has had 30 years to govern this country, and they've misgoverned it. That's a fact. You know, you, you, whatever you think about the ANC, they've had the chance. Japan, Singapore, to buy this country within a decade, you could already see the massive changes they brought about. Uh, Rwanda just comes from the biggest genocide. And within 25 years, they've managed to get the country on the straight and narrow. So the ANC, the, the DA has for 30 years been criticizing the ANC, and today they're telling us, now we're going to... It's like calling somebody the worst human being, and then tomorrow you're marrying that person. That's what we're seeing here. Both of them are going to pay dearly because uh, it is it will be the end of, 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 of the DA, and it will be the near end of the ANC. What... Helen Zeller don't understand, and the DA, there's no Searles ANC, there's no good ANC and bad ANC. This is one boat. Whether it leaks on Searles' side or it leaks on the other side, everybody's going to drown. And you guys are in the rescue boats or not? No, you know, for us, I've been very clear, and I've been criticized particularly by your listeners, particularly by your listeners, listeners more than anybody, when I said to them, with me, I don't have no preference between the ANC and the DA. And then the very DA is criticizing me. Now, I want to show you how ridiculous uh, this uh, proposition of the DA was to the PA, which your listeners criticized me for. The DA says to me, sign here that you will not work with the ANC ever. But the DA is now refusing to sign the very same document. If I'm going to paraphrase Michael Bowman of Action SA, he says, when they put in that clause that none of them will work with the ANC, he thought it's an open door. Everybody's just going to walk through it. The D is not signing. Now, do you understand the racism in wanting our party to sign something, but you see yourself above that? We can read no other thing than white superiority complex in that because you're saying you can't you can work with the ANC, but we can. And that's nonsense we would never admit, uh, agree to as the Patriotic Alliance. The DA and the ANC must stop fooling people. We know they have a deal. Uh, they're just now uh, testing the waters. 
the DA, uh, people must know, they must not vote for the following three parties, particularly white people. White people should know they should not vote for the PA. They should not vote for the DA. The PA, which is the party I lead, and the DA. They should choose between X and SA and Freedom Front Plus. I am saying it as the leader of the PA because a vote for the DA, a vote for the DA is a vote for the ANC. If you're going to vote for the PA, the PA is not clear on who are they going to form a coalition with, and we are being honest about it. So you, you're still risking with your vote by the PA. By the DA, you're not risking, you know who you're voting for, the, the ANC. XNSA is clear, they will never work with the ANC. Freedom Front Plus is clear. So as a leader of another party, I am telling people just the truth which they do not want to hear. Don't vote for the DA. You are, t you are donating your vote to the African National Congress. A vote for the DA is a vote for the ANC. A vote for the PA might even be leading to power sharing with the ANC. And I'm being honest. But with the other two parties, you know you're not going to help the ANC. Uh, talking about possible power sharing with the ANC, but you are not part of the upcoming uh, coalition summit of opposition party leaders, are you? No, you see, it started with the wrong footing. I think there's three points that your listeners will hear for the first time today. Yeah. Hmm. And they've not read the balance of forces, including the ANC. And you're going to replay this tape in a month and a half or two months, and you'll be like, this is what Gator McKenzie said is going to happen. Firstly, when you're going to start a moonshot bet. There was a great name for a coalition called a rainbow coalition. A rainbow. Black people don't do stuff like going to the moon. Have you ever had a black person going to the moon? To be honest, like, we don't do stuff. Party Zabi is the, is the the highest people, black people usually go with job. Now you come with a name moonshot bet. So let them go to the moon. When they come back from the moon, we'll be in charge of the Western Cape. So I think the first point that I want to make is the first point I want to make is that the Moonshot Pact started at the wrong footing. There was a beautiful name called Rainbow Coalition. They, the DA came with their own name. Then the DA says, we don't want PA. Now they have a party there called Spectrum. Spectrum does not have one vote. They have not one seat we know about. Who's Spectrum? You have UIM with two or three seats. You say you don't want a party with 86 seats. 86 seats, but you want a party with no seats, it shows you the scared of the patriotic alliance. Now, if you start a moonshot pack like that, you're starting it wrong. That's first point. Second point, the ANC is about to split. People don't know that. I'm telling you. You see, the ANC is going to split into three. It is Sir Ramaphosa's ANC. It's going to be Ace Mahashule's ANC. And Ace says, no, don't. I grew up in the free state. I never put the relations with Ace Makashule because I was always in the other camp. And for 20 years, he's beaten us. I went to jail, he beat us. I came out of jail. That camp was still being beaten that I belonged to. <laughs> so it's not, he was the Secretary General of the ANC, which basically means he was the CEO of the ANC. So he's privy to information of, of members that he can approach. And then I don't think this is my opinion and Kenny and everybody disagrees with me in my party. I just think that they've pushed Jacob Zuma too far. That's my opinion. And I think he's going to make a move that's going to hurt IFP and it's going to hurt the ANC equally. Everybody says I'm crazy. In two months, we'll see if I'm crazy. But my opinion is that they've pushed him too far, his own organization. And I think he loves the ANC. And I think he's going to teach them a lesson. That's my opinion. They say, no, he said he's done. I've said many things uh, to my friends and then come up back and say, ah, but I can't do that. So I think that's the thing that the DA is going to form a coalition with a party that's already splitting mm. uh, amongst the siblings. And then the last one is, we have just, I just think that but the ANC has made it clear also they don't like to work with the PA. The youth league president of the ANC said, we can't work with people like the PA that come from jail. The veterans league of the of the ANC said the very same thing. So I am saying we are very close 
because I can take the word of Herman Masaba to the bank. I can take the word of Corning Mulder to the bank. If they tell me something, I don't need a signature. We are very close. I think I'm just watching how this moonshot bet play out. And then we are going to invite them that we must form a pact where, including the PA, all of us must sign and say we will not work with the ANC. Let us see who will then not sign. Because I'm telling you today, as the leader of the Patriotic Alliance, we will sign such a pact. But we will not sign a pact where we know for a fact the DA and the ANC are doing a deal. We can be a weekend special during the weekday with the ANC. Late at night, Saturday evening, uh, they are with the, with the moonshot pact. Uh -uh. So we, are you uh, beginning I'm to feel... You started feeling like a mistress who is neglected. Is that it? Exactly. That's, that's how you started to feel. So I'm saying the Patriotic Alliance is willing to go into a pact with the Action SA, Freedom Front Plus, that we know will not go into. But how do I, I know for a fact, I know more than some of your listeners, that I know they're talking with ANC because some of the people in that meeting are my personal friends. And they're telling me, listen, gee, we just met with this one. So I'm saying to you, the Patriotic Alliance, the DA's bluff should be called. Let them call a summit where we all sign, including the PA. That's my dare to them. Where they, we all say, and I can tell you one thing about me. I don't make false promises. I don't lie. I will never say anything. I always keep my word no matter what. Whether it's in business, whether it's in politics. I'm not known as somebody don't keep his word. So I'm saying publicly, I will come and say, let's sign. None of us will go with the ANC. But I will, I will sign after the DA sign. Let's see what they sign. That's a day. Where okay. is all this going to leave the economic freedom fighters? You know, the, the one thing that you must understand, and this is my opinion, mm. you apparently, and, and I've not had that experience. I must first give that. But everybody says that you can say one thing to the economic freedom fighters, then they do the next thing. And that's what the ANC told us. Now, I, I'm not even going to going to say it's like that or it's not like that. Mm. But I'm going to say this. The economic freedom fighters is the wild card of this coalition because of 2024, because they've mm. worked with the DA, they've worked with the ANC. In 2016, none of us even thought they'll go with the DA. And they did. And which was their right, I must say. So I'm saying that it's very difficult to predict them. But there's something else happening, which is the third thing I told you, your listeners are going to hear for the first time. There's a black pack rising amongst political parties, a black pact rising, where they take black parties forming together uh, one party. It is in the early stages of negotiation. And what I am being told is that they are all talking on an equal level with each other, with an equal level. How I know about this, we've been invited to us, I declined. I declined. Now, what you need with a moonshot pact, you need somebody with emotional intelligence, which John has nothing of. John Stevenson has no emotional intelligence. He might be an intelligent person, I think. I know he's intelligent, but he's got no emotional intelligence. You need a corny murder. Somebody that can lead this thing with, without size. I mean, you look at the leader of the Freedom Front Plus, Slowald. Uh, he said something so profound. He said, we need an IFP person as a president. I mean, he said a party that I think they're a bit bigger than the IFP, but he didn't, he didn't put his party first. That's the type of emotional intelligence you need to be able to run a, a, a coalition. But you see, your listeners, they lap everything up the day, telling them, Ellen Zeller tells them, they lap up. That woman is busy taking a big gamble with the future of this country that's going to backfire. She thinks she knows things. We know more. And you watch this space in the next two months, what is happening in this country. There's bright minds in the DA that's being taken down the slippery slope with the ANC. If you have a thousand liters of ice cream, a thousand liters of ice cream, and you put one teaspoon of shit in it, you don't have a thousand liters of ice cream anymore. You have a thousand liters of shit. She doesn't know what she's doing by going with the ANC. Biz News just Biz celebrated its 10th anniversary, and one of the speakers was Rob Herself, your friend, who uh, who spoke about how the two of you, coming from such different backgrounds, him of privilege and you of not, are in total agreement about everything. Tell us what you agree with. 
what do you agree on with her, sir? <laughs> Let me tell you, uh, Rob is, 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 <laughs> he's taking chances. Let me explain to you why I'm saying that. Rob is one of my closest friends. I've known him for three, three and a half years. And we've just grown, grown together because of the differences we have. Rob has been trying to, to make me believe in things he believes in. I try to make him believe in things. I believe him. Now, let me tell you what we don't believe in, and then I tell you what we do agree on. Rob wants an independent Cape Town. I don't believe that, and I will never stand for that. He wants that. Uh, uh, Rob despised the ANC. I don't like them. There's a difference, but I don't despise them. Uh, I can tell you Rob has managed to convince me to join the Springboks. I was an all-black supporter, like majority of colored people I know. We were spring, all black supporters. Rob has turned me around. I want to say this to you about that gentleman. He's a true patriot. He loves this country to a fault. I mean, his family would suffer because of the love. He risked his own life because of this country. He says things that everybody wants to say, but they're too scared to say it. Rob also says their things. And I, I can tell you, I'm a capitalist. He's a capitalist. We agree on that. I believe that every country should be our friend. He doesn't believe, he doesn't like Russia, for instance. I believe that South Africa needs to reboot the friendship with countries. We must be friends of every country. And we must not inherit old enemies of the yesteryear. And I always tell him, I said, America dropped two bombs on Japan, two bombs, Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And today, Japan is the biggest trading partner of America. That's how geopolitics work. And we should take that mindset. I said, but I love Rob McNeil. I love, I love him. I love his kids. I know all his kids. They know me. And we like family, man. He's become family. And sometimes I just laugh with the things he says because then people are like, ah, Rob is just talking. But then after a month or so, what he's saying, it's becoming true. He's a brave man, I can tell you. And he doesn't know how to speak his truth carefully. That's his problem, I think, sometimes, which is a good thing and a bad thing. Maybe that's something you two have in common. <laughs> uh, maybe I learned that from him or learned that from me. <laughs> but he told us that you had just been to Israel and that you'd met um, with President. At, I'm speaking under correction. Is that right? What happened there? No, basically, you know, we, we've been, I've been brought up with a staple food that Israel is an apartheid state. Mm -hmm. That's what I've been brought up and that's what I believe. And that's what everybody in my circle believes that Israel is an apartheid state. No, I'm a Christian, number one. And I'm a staunch Christian, for lack of a better word. And I then, two of my best friends, which are Jewish people, then asked me, why don't you do the walk test? I said, what's the walk test? They said, come with us to Israel and you go wherever you want to go. And I remember when I got there, the first incident that happened, when I landed, and I took the whole leadership with me of the PA, not the whole leadership, but top five of the leadership went with us. And we got there. And usually what white people don't know about black people is whenever we travel overseas, we always get stopped. <laughs> whenever we go, we must go and do that eye test, what they call it, <laughs> that metric or whatever they call it. That's a fact. And I, and I landed in Israel, and we walked past the border, past the people there, the immigration. And as we walk past, they start screaming, stop, stop, stop now. And this lady was really screaming like nobody's ever screamed at us. And they came running. And I said, uh, I thought we just having the first time not being stopped. And they ran past that. And there was four white people there. They said, come <laughs> here, come here. I'm going to search you. And I'm like, oh, this is truly a party state. It's vice versa. But on a more serious note is, well, I felt happy that it wasn't for us. I can tell you, firstly, the three points I want to make about Israel is there is war in Ukraine. There's war in Russia. There's, there's, the, the country is burning. The world is burning at different places. Things between the Israelis and the Palestinians are not good. It's burning. But I don't hear our country saying we should not talk to Russia. I don't hear our country saying that we should not talk to people in Sudan. Why is it that we should not talk to the, Palest to the Israelis? Why are we downgrading their embassy? The Israeli uh, embassy, in, the Syrian embassy in Israel. Now here's the point, and people are scared to say this, and I'm going to say it on your show today. Number one, let me tell you something. Calling Israel a part of the state is an insult and, a, 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 and, and you are degrading the pain that black people felt. It's like comparing the Holocaust to, 
to, to, to some massacre in Boy Batong, for instance. It's, 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 it's six million Jews died. Now, compared to 32 blacks, it's not comparable. Although it's both a tragedy, but tragedy is a variance of scale, degrees of scale. Now, saying that apartheid is an Israel state, one, I was never told in Israel to use a separate toilet. While I saw Palestinians being doctors in Israel, while I saw 22% of the population, and I'm not here coming to be an Israel apologist, but I'm here to say to you that Israel, according to us, you know, what we know what an apartheid state means, is not an apartheid state. Secondly, which is very importantly, South Africa needs the solutions that Israel has. Ramallah in Palestine, if you ask any resident in Ramallah, come stay in Kalitsa, they will refuse because Ramallah has electricity. It has water. Go to Kalitsa. So people want me as a leader to put the interest of the Palestinians above the interest of South Africans. Hate me for it. I will never do that. I am saying to you, Israel has turned seawater into potable water. Number one. In the coastal towns like Cape Town, coastal cities like Cape Town and PE, there's a water shortage for more than 15 years. There's the solution. But we are playing politics with people's lives. In the Eastern Cape, young black men are dying because of botched circumcisions. Israel has the technology. Swift. Get rid of the foreskin. Nobody dies. Nobody gets infected with HIV AIDS. Now, I must ignore those things because of some political beliefs. We must not play politics with people's lives. I am saying, being a friend of Israel, which I am, does not make me an enemy of the Palestinians. If the friendship of the Palestinians come at the cost that I should become an enemy with Israel, then I don't want the friendship of the Palestinians. As a leader, I know there's going to be a coalition government and we are going to be part of this coalition government. And when we part of this coalition government, Israel, illegal foreigners, and, and bring God back into our constitution and bring the death penalty back are our non-negotiables. We are not going to negotiate on those things. Anybody that wants our vote, which won't be the key maker vote, must bring back the death penalty. If you kill somebody, we kill you. Number two, law and order must come back. Number two, we must bring God back. We are, we are a religious country. Number three, we must make friends with all the countries in the world. We can't afford enemies. And, and as I said to you, number four, mass deportation of all illegal immigrants. And we will sit out of power if they don't agree with those things I've just mentioned. But otherwise, we can still negotiate on. But South Africa wants to be friends with, we must now inherit the enemies and the friends from the era of apartheid. Countries don't work like that. Countries don't work like that. The geopolitics doesn't work like that. Israel has many solutions that can help the South African people. And what irks me, what makes me angry, is they talk bad about Jewish people uh, in statements and Israel. But at night, when they have political campaigns, they go and ask for money from Jewish people to fund them. The day Jewish people can start talking, how many political parties, because there's no Jewish person funding the PA. And if there's anyone, I dare him to come out right now. But I'm not doing this because as a Jewish person, there's not one Jewish person that gave the Patriotic Alliance money. And I'm saying the people that talk bad about Israel, and here am I talking good about Israel, the people that talk bad about the holy city of Jerusalem, they are getting millions from well-meaning Jewish people that want to protect democracy in this country. I said it. They, all of them, all parties except the PA gets money from Jewish people. All of them. There's not a single party. Let them come out and say, we, we, don't, we don't get money from them. Any last thoughts on this clan, clandestine romance between the ANC and the DA before we say goodbye? But, you know, for me, it's just, I just before you just say goodbye, I just need to mention something that I think I need to say something on. This song, Kill the Boer, Kill the Farmer. It does, it, it's like the old apartheid flag. The old apartheid flag had a meaning at the time. It jolted the Afrikaner people together in solidarity, whatever the cause may have been. Kill the Boer, Kill the Farmer. I seen it myself growing up. It had a meaning. Boer, boer, the word boer meant the system of apartheid. That's, that's how, that was, that's the context of it. And anybody that tells you other context was not part of the struggle. Uh, 
and we called apartheid system the Boer system. And I say we have no place today for that song in what we are trying to build in this country. That it is wrong. That song should be banned. We have no time for nonsensical songs like that in the current uh, place where we find ourselves as South Africans. Uh, that song can be misconstrued by very stupid people. And there's people that say that I don't condemn the song Kill the Boer, Kill the Farmer. I want to say to them, when I was having a deal with the EFF and the ANC in Nelson Mandela Bay, and the evening of the deal, Julius Malema said, Ethel Troller must go because he wants to cut the throat of whiteness. I removed my support that evening and Ethel Troller remained the mayor of Nelson Mandela Bay because I said, how could some fool, there's many fools in this country, some fool will say, man, go and cut the throat of whiteness. I don't want such examples. So I want to say to people, I'm against the song. That song had a meeting once and it has no place in South Africa anymore. And then lastly, I just want to say to the DA, come let us all sign. We will not work with the ANC in 2024 because we are in part in politics to remove the ruling party, whoever it is. We want to remove the ANC from power. Now, if Helen Zeller must stop accusing us and the DA, let us all sign, let the people call people, and I, Gaten McKenzie, will sign. I will sign there to say we will not go with the ANC in 2024 because what's the point of being in politics if I don't want to remove the ruling party? We might remove the ruling party. Thank you. That was Gaten McKenzie of the Patriotic Alliance speaking to Biz News. Salute. Thank you.